Hey, good morning friends. This is Abhishek from TechVirus and in this video I'll be showing you the unboxing of Hyper 212X. This is one of the best air-cooled heatsink for Intel and AMD processors. This is from Cooler Master and it has been designed in Taiwan. I have purchased this from Flipkart.com and in this video I'll be showing you the complete step how you have to install this on your motherboard and then at last I'll show you the performance of this cooler. So stay tuned. So let me quickly cut this box and show you what all things comes with this cooler. Okay, now in this small box we have okay, so I think this should be the manual. Yeah, this is user manual. And then we have warranty card for this cooler. Okay. I'll keep it aside. And then we have metal support for holding the cooler on the CPU. Okay. And then we have these two plastic clips. This will be used if you are using one extra fan in this cooler. Also we have a small foam and inside this, let me zoom this video. Here you can see we have multiple screws and then we have thermal paste from Cooler Master. Let me take out everything out of that small foam and you can see we have these many screwdrivers, thermal paste, it's one small screwdriver kind of thing. So these will be used while installing the CPU cooler. Now let me take out the main component of this box, that's this heat sink and the fan. Okay, so both are tied up together here and you can see how nicely they have packed it. Let me turn the box back and you can see here we have one metallic strip and this will be used to install the screws on the motherboard. I'll keep this aside and I'll show you later how to use that. Okay, so now I'll remove this plastic case. And now here is the Hyper 212X. Let me zoom the camera and show you the device. Device is nicely designed. The build is strong. You can see here how nicely they have designed. And this is the power cable. Okay, and back side you can see these are these metallic strips and they are quite strong. And fan is also looking very nice. All right, friends, now it's time to install this cooler on my motherboard. So what I'll do, I'll open the case and we'll try to install the cooler without removing motherboard from the cabinet. So let's see how to do that. All right, the first step is to remove the old CPU cooler which came with my Intel processor. So what I'll do, I'll remove these clips. You just have to pull it up and this will be easy to remove. Okay, and the last one I'll just pull it up and now I have to remove the wire, the socket for the power and then I can just lift it up. Okay, now you can see that uh, my processor has old thermal paste which, for, which is dried up actually. I, I cannot use this. I have to clean this up before using my new thermal paste. So I'll use one non-static cloth and I'll just wipe it off. Make sure that you are not using any nail paint remover or any petroleum pro product. You can use alcohol, the pure alcohol to remove this, but it's good. You can use dry cloth, the cotton cloth to remove these things. All right. Now you can see it's quite clean. All right, guys, let me tell you one thing that I tried installing the cooler without removing the motherboard out of this cabinet, but I was not able to do it because the two holes for the screws were stuck uh, with this particular cabinet. If your cabinet allows you, you can install without removing the motherboard, but for me, it was easy after removing the motherboard out of the cabinet. All right, friends, now you can see that my motherboard is out of the cabinet and I have placed it on motherboard box itself you need to make sure that you have to use a soft box or any soft base. If you're using hard base, it can damage your motherboard circuits. All right. And also make sure that you are grounded properly. You don't have any static energy in your body. Otherwise, 
that can also damage your motherboard okay so I'll be using these four motherboard standoffs these are the bigger ones if you see in your box there are two types of standoffs one is small one and one is bigger one so I'm using bigger one because my motherboard slot is LGA 1150 just check the manual which standoff suits your motherboard and use accordingly now you can see these are the four holes and I need to put these standoffs inside this so how to do that first of all you need to put this metallic plate and find out how will it fit in okay let me zoom and show you one thing there are three small slots here and I need to put the screw or motherboard standoff in the middle one because this is LGA 1150 okay the next step is I'll put the standoff from inside you can see and then I have to put the metallic plate on top of it and I have to make sure that I'm using the middle slot okay you can see the first screw is in and I'll put the screw like this from top I need to hold it from down as well and then I'll put the second standoff from down and then I'll put the screw on top so this is the process you need to do this is bit difficult to do because you need to lift your motherboard and put your hand down and then put the standoff from inside but this is only for the four screws and then you will be all set just make sure that the flat portion of the screw is towards the flat portion of the metallic plate okay so this is the last one this is the screw I'll be putting it and screwing the last motherboard standoff alright so this is done first do it manually and then you have to use the screw adjuster so this is the screw adjuster you have to use this and tight up all the screws which you have just manually screwed up now you have to put this and use the screwdriver and tight all the four screws like this make sure to double check all the screws that you have tightened them properly and this is the last one I'm screwing up and it's done once you are done with installing this metallic plate make sure that you do not remove this insulation sticker this is pasted all around the metallic plate okay now you have successfully installed all these four standoffs and here you need to fit your metallic clip okay so I'll try to fit in this metallic clip and I'll try to check if I have installed everything properly or not and here you need to make sure that which motherboard version which processor slot you're using if I'm using LGA 1150 I need to put this screw in the second slot so how to move this screw you need to just pull it up and move it you can easily move into these three slots so I need to use the middle slot because this is LGA 1150 if your motherboard is different check the manual and select that slot okay so I have moved all the screws in their proper position and then I'll put this clip on the motherboard standoff we have just installed why I'm doing this because I want to make sure that all the screws are gro going properly in the standoff and I don't face any issue while installing the cooler because once you are having cooler in your hand and you then try to check all these things it will be very difficult so it's really good you should always pre-check this metallic clip by putting all the four screws that they are going properly and then you bring your cooler okay so all are going fine I'll just remove this out and get the cooler okay the next step is to decide upon which side you want to keep the cooler fan on the RAM side or down or the back I'll prefer this fan should be towards my RAM side because I have another fan which can give it air from the back side 
okay so once you decide on which side you want to put it just remove the fan from the clip you have to just push it out and the fan will easily come out okay it feels a bit difficult but it's easy to take it out okay so now you need to put the clip and the heat sink together so how to do that don't remove this plastic because we are just testing if our clip and the heat sink are going properly I'll put the clip like this and then I'll try to fit all the slots on the motherboard standoff with the screw which is on this metallic clip so now you can see I'm able to put all the screws properly it's a bit hard but don't worry this is normal you will feel all the screws bit hard because they have a spring and it ideally should be hard because it has to hold entire cooler now you can see after putting the screws this will look like this so once you are done with this step you are 99 percent sure that your setup is proper and you can go ahead and remove this and go for the final installation okay now the next step is to apply the thermal paste on your processor I'm using the stock thermal paste which came with this cooler I will prefer putting small dot in between because when you put the cooler this will automatically spread it all around okay now take your cooler and at this point of time just put all the clips as we have tested before and remove this plastic make sure you have to remove that plastic don't keep that plastic and then slowly you need to put it on the processor and be precise as much as you can so that all the four screws touch the slots properly and then leave it for a second because that will spread the thermal paste what we have applied and then try to put the screws okay so you can see we are able to put the screws properly and then you need to tighten up all the four screws slowly do it diagonally do two screws on the diagonal and then tighten all the screws from all the side once you have firmly tightened up all the screws just lift the board and try to check if it is not falling you can turn it upside down and check okay so if everything is perfect go ahead install the fan so how will you install the fan you have to just keep the wire down so that it's easy for the socket and then match the length of the fan from here and then push it once you push it it will easily go into its slot okay now just shorten this cable and put it in the socket for CPU fan now you can install the RAM whichever slot you want I have a space for all these slots it's not blocking any of the slot so that's a good thing I was expecting that it will block one of my closest slot but nothing like that this is quite free okay so I've done installation on the motherboard and it's time to move to the cabinet I'll put this motherboard inside the cabinet and tighten all the screws and plug in all the cables alright I have installed motherboard on the cabinet and I have plugged in all the cables let me zoom and show you how does this cooler looks like so here is the cooler and it fits in properly one more thing I'd like to tell you that make sure that your cabinet supports this size of CPU cooler otherwise you might waste your money in purchasing this CPU cooler okay so now let me show you the performance of this cooler by switching on my PC for the first time after putting this cooler here you can see that CPU voltage is 1.056 volt and the CPU temperature is 32 degrees Celsius and the CPU fan is rotating at 657 RPM 
So let me tell you that I'm running this computer from last 15 minutes and this is constantly hovering between 32 and 35. So guys, this was my video tutorial how to install this CPU cooler. If you like my video, give a thumbs up and subscribe my channel. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.